We back with another one, y'all. Y'all know a lot of stuff been going on crazy with Diddy. He going to jail. A lot of other people might end up going to jail. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I don't see Diddy just sitting in there finna take a whole bunch of time, a whole bunch of years and all that. No, I do not see that. Um, But this the thing. If they want to take a $50 million bond from you, I don't even think they want you to tell on them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, 50 million? Like, if they ain't trying to take 50 million, I don't think they even finna let you tell on nobody. That's the crazy part. But, you know, it's been getting crazy. So, we finna go on here and get into this video real quick. <laughs> Diddy's been running the rap game since the 90s, but now he's facing life in prison and could take some huge stars down with him. And today we're breaking down the entire crazy story. Diddy's allegedly been assaulting, robbing, and shooting people for decades. But before we get into that, we gotta look at what really sparked his downfall and got the feds involved with the situation. In November 2023, Diddy's ex Cassie filed a lawsuit against him and said that she was trafficked and beaten by Diddy for years. Cassie met Diddy when she was 19 and he was 37 and Diddy allegedly started abusing her from the jump. Cassie tried to leave him a few different times, but Diddy had a lot of clout in the industry and allegedly threatened to end Cassie's career if she left him. A day after the lawsuit was filed, Diddy and Cassie settled it out of court and nobody knew if Diddy actually did anything to her. But then CNN posted a video of Diddy attacking Cassie in a hotel back in 2016. Cassie said they were in the hotel together and Diddy put hands on her. She got a black guy and tried to leave after Diddy fell asleep, but then the situation got way worse. While Cassie was walking down the hallway to leave the hotel, Diddy came out of the room in a towel and chased her down. Diddy grabbed Cassie and threw her to the ground and started kicking and punching her. According to Cassie's lawsuit, Diddy tried to pay someone at the hotel 50k to get the footage so nobody else would see it. But somehow CNN got it before Diddy could get rid of the evidence. Hey, the tape came from Diddy House, the feds raided Diddy House. Diddy son started talking crazy. The feds was like, we got some. <laughs> and and the feds walk right up to CNN, hand the CNN the tape, and that's how the tape got out there. Evidence. After the video came out, Diddy posted an apology video and said he had hit rock bottom and was disgusted with himself. I was fucked up. I mean, I hit rock bottom, but I made no excuses. My behavior on that video is inexcusable. I take full responsibility for my actions. Nigga, you should've went to Bally with Russell. That, that's, <laughs> nigga should've, you know what I'm saying? Should've got up out of here and went to Bally. She's in that video. I'm disgusted. The Los Angeles District Attorney said they couldn't charge Diddy for putting hands on Cassie because it happened in 2016 and the statute of limitations was already up. Diddy said that he went to therapy and rehab and was trying to be a better person, but the situation was just getting started. A week after Cassie opened a lawsuit against Diddy, another woman named Joy Dickerson Neal sued him too. According to Dickerson Neal, she met Diddy back in 91 while she was a student and went out to dinner with him. That's when Diddy allegedly spiked her drink and took her back to his place. Dickerson Neal said she couldn't do anything because of the drugs, and Diddy allegedly assaulted her and filmed the whole thing to show off. Right after Dickerson Neal accused Diddy, a woman named Lisa Gardner filed a lawsuit against him and said that Diddy sexually assaulted her when she was 16 years old. Gardner also met Diddy and a singer named Aaron Hall in the early 90s at a party in Manhattan. After the party, Diddy and Aaron Hall brought her back to Hall's apartment and allegedly assaulted her. Then in December 2023, a woman whose name wasn't released came forward and said that she had been gang raped and sex trafficked by Diddy and Harve Pierre. Harve Pierre used to be the president of Diddy's label Bad Boy Records, and rumors say that he helped Diddy cover up all kinds of shady stuff. Hey, and it's crazy, I ain't gonna lie, I ain't even know he was like the president because I remember when he used to cut everybody here. <laughs> For real. Well, making a band and everything, he was lining niggas up. I, I thought this nigga was the barber. I ain't know he was the president. Damn, he was wearing multiple hats around that month. It's not just women who spoke up about Diddy, though. In 2024, a dude named Lil Rod opened up a lawsuit against Diddy and said he was involved with serious illegal activity. Lil Rod helped Diddy produce his record, the Love Album, Off the Grid, and he also lived and traveled with Diddy for over a year. Lil Rod said Diddy tried to sexually assault him, made him have sex with prostitutes, and he even watched Diddy allegedly giving people spiked drinks at parties. 
Diddy also wanted Lil Rod and another dude named Brendan Paul to carry drugs and guns for him while they traveled together. The case was already looking crazy, but Lil Rod claims that Diddy's even more dangerous than people thought. Back in 2022, Lil Rod was at a studio in LA with Diddy, Diddy's son Justin, and Justin's homie G. According to Lil Rod, Diddy, Justin, and G were all in the bathroom at the studio, and Lil Rod could hear an argument going down inside. Then shots started going off, and when Diddy and Justin left the bathroom, Lil Rod saw G laying on the floor with a gunshot wound. According to police reports, G told him that he was on the street when two dudes walked up and tried to rob him. Then the situation went left, and they ended up shooting him. Nobody knows what really went down yet, and the cops in LA haven't said if they're investigating Diddy and his son Justin for the shooting yet. It's not clear if Diddy and Justin really pulled the trigger on G or not, but after Lil Rod's lawsuit came out, everyone knew that the situation was getting worse for Diddy. And a month after that, the news broke that the feds raided Diddy's houses in LA and Miami. While the cops were searching the houses, they stopped Diddy at the airport in Miami and took his cell phones too. And when they was raiding the houses, that's where they found the tape. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now, my whole thing with Diddy is, bro, you paid the hotel like 50 grand or whatever you paid them to get the tape, didn't destroy the tape, didn't kept the tape. I don't know, like, why, why would you keep that tape? And who else you showed that tape to trying to threaten them or anything? That's why the whole thing don't make no sense to me. But CNN don't break stuff like that. TMZ do. So even TMZ was looking at CNN like, how the hell y'all get the tape? <laughs> but it's confirmed that because Diddy's supposed to be trying to sue, like, the Fed, which I think is dumb, that he finna try to sue the feds because they gave the tape to CNN or whatever. Like, crazy. Brendan Pauls with Diddy at the airport when the cops showed up. Diddy didn't get arrested that day, but the cops booked Brendan Paul for possession of cocaine and marijuana edibles. A month after the feds raided Diddy's crib, his son Christian got hit with a sexual assault lawsuit too. A woman named Grace Omar said claims that Christian Damn. drugged and sexually like assaulted father, her while she like was working son. on Diddy's yeah. yacht. Then CNN posted a video of Diddy putting hands on Cassie at the hotel back in 2016. And by that point, it was clear that Diddy had serious heat on him and wasn't going to be able to just walk away from it all. In September 2024, a singer named Don Richard also sued Diddy for assault, kidnapping, and sending death threats. Don Richard was in a group Diddy put together called Danity Kane. According to Don Richard, Diddy put hands on her because she tried to protect Cassie from him. Then Diddy allegedly told Don that he could end people. Then just a couple weeks later, the feds officially booked Diddy and hit him with a RICO case. The prosecutor said that Diddy abused, threatened, and coerced victims Facts. to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct since at least 2008. The indictment claims Diddy used his connections in the industry to get away with sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and obstruction of justice. But the thing that really went viral was the cops talking about Diddy's freak-offs. According to the feds, Diddy threw wild parties and would fly in male prostitutes to have sex with the women he was drugging and abusing. Diddy's crew would rent hotel rooms and bring drugs, alcohol, and lube. Then Diddy would make everyone have sex for days at a time. Then when it was over, his team would give the women and prostitutes liquid IVs to help them recover from the freak off. The feds said that the women and sex workers were forced into the freak offs. Diddy drugged them to make them do whatever he wanted. And if they tried to get out, he would use violence or money to make them stay. And to keep everybody quiet about what was happening, Diddy filmed everything and threatened to leak the videos if anyone spoke up about it. Diddy was allegedly putting hands on women all the time, and if they were bruised or cut, he would trap them inside his crib and not let them go until they healed up. There have been rumors about Diddy going around for years, and 50 Cent has always been sending shots at him. 50 was allegedly a ghostwriter for Diddy back in the day, but then 50 dropped the track The Bomb and rapped, Who shot Biggie Smalls? We don't get him. They gonna kill us all. Man, Puffy know who hit that nigga. Man, that nigga saw. Him. He scared them boys from the west side to break them off. Dump on his ass. So he run to Harlem, shake them off. 50 also went on drink champs and said he stopped being around Diddy after Diddy offered to take him shopping and treated him like a woman. He telling me we got a kick in this shit. And he was like, yo, why don't we like go shopping or some shit? I mean, like, I paid for it. And I was like, what the fuck this nigga just said? <laughs> 50 was a fool for that. But yeah, I probably feel like that too, man. Don't tell me you're gonna take me shopping. You grown as hell. You ain't taking me shopping. 50 even allegedly sold a documentary about Diddy's abuse to Netflix. Then 50 clowned Diddy again after the video of Diddy hitting Cassie came out. When the feds raided Diddy's cribs, they found over a thousand bottles of lube and baby oil that were for the freak offs. And 50 clowned Diddy for the situation again on Instagram. Diddy never clapped back before the feds booked him, but his son Christian dropped the track pick aside and rapped, 
when all they had was 50 cent who put this city on the map mm -hmm. stop lying Pop's been hated on by many men, and nigga, that's fine. They gon' try to stop these m and and they gon' die trying. Pull up to the south side, we locked and we got ties. Christian also raps about the Fed raid and said, Police raid the crib like we selling crack, but we out here selling tracks, multi-million dollar plaques. Rather put this shit on wax, all that gossip shit is whack. 50 isn't the only dude in the rap game who sent shots at Diddy though. MGK was signed to Diddy's Bad Boy record label, and when he started beefing with Eminem, Eminem dropped the track Kill Shot and rapped, Kill Shot, I would not fail, I'm with the doc still. But this idiot's boss pops pills and tells him he's got skills. But Kells, the day you put out the hits, the day Diddy admits that he put the hit out that got pot killed. Then in 2024, Eminem took an even crazier shot at Diddy on the track Fuel and rapped, I'm like an R-A-P-E-R, -E got so many essays, essays, wait, didn't he just spell the word rapper and leave out a P? Diddy, R.I.P. Rest in peace, Biggie and Pop. Both of y'all should be living. But I ain't trying to beef with him because he might put a hit on me like Keefy D, get him. And that's the only way you're going to be killing me. Ain't going to be on no beat, silly. Besides the Rico case Diddy's facing for the sex trafficking right now, rumors say he might go down for Tupac's murder too. The cops arrested Keefy D in 2023 for killing Tupac and Keefy claimed that Diddy put a meal on Pac's head. After the feds booked Diddy on the trafficking case, it started working with the people prosecuting Keefy D, too. Now the Las Vegas prosecutors are sending their evidence on Diddy to the feds, so the situation could end up getting even worse for Diddy if the feds can prove that he really ordered the hit on Pop. After all the lawsuits came out against Diddy, a bunch of weird videos about him started going around on social media. Diddy discovered Usher when he was 13 years old and started helping him get into the industry. Usher's parents sent him to live with Diddy while he was still a kid, and Usher told Howard Stern that he got the chance to see some things. It was curious. I got a chance to see some things. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I seeing? I went there to see the lifestyle. And when Stern asked Usher if he would let his own kids go to Puffy Camp, Usher told him, hell no. You're a dad now. Would you ever send your kid to Puffy Camp? <laughs> hell <laughs> no. When Diddy got arrested, rumors started flying about Usher being involved with the case because a bunch of his old tweets got deleted from his Twitter page. Usher hopped back on Twitter and said his account got hacked, but a lot of people thought the timing of the situation was sketchy. Usher signed Justin Bieber when Bieber was a young teenager, and Diddy adopted him for two days and said, Where we hanging out and what we doing? Justin Bieber, parents, bogus as hell. <laughs> bogus. Hey, y'all, and then it's the crazy part is like, it, it, it went like an official adoption, so it's like, it's crazy. Like, y'all really just, but like some fame and some stardom, y'all really just let y'all son go to this other grown man house and then not even know like what was going on with him. Same with Usher, uh, mama let him go to Diddy house, didn't even know what was going on. Crazy. Um, we, we can't really disclose, but um, it's definitely a 15 year old's dream. And in another weird video from back in the day, Diddy pressed Bieber about not hanging out with him anymore. Starting to act different, huh? You ain't, you ain't been calling me and hanging out the way we I would have hit Diddy right in his damn mouth. We used to hang out. Well, I mean, you I mean, you try to get in contact with me, you know, through all my, you know, business, you know, partners and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But you, you never really got my number, so. Right. Okay. My number? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah, yeah. Tell you my number yeah, yeah, yeah. There have been a lot of rumors about Diddy grooming Bieber when he was young. Back in 2020, Bieber did an interview with Zane Lowe and talked about how hard it was for him in the industry and said he didn't want anyone else to go through what he did. I don't want her to go through anything I went through. I don't wish that upon anybody. Yeah, if she ever needs me, I'm, I'm just a call away. It's not clear if Diddy actually did anything to Bieber, but another video started going around where Khloe Kardashian talks about seeing Bieber at Diddy's party where half the people there were butt naked. I got on a plane at 5.30 a.m. Oh, this party. I think half the people there were butt naked. Diddy getting hit with a fed case shook up the whole industry. A lot of people in the rap game are trying to keep their distance from it. But Lil Boosie hopped on Twitter and said that Diddy's basically in jail for doing what every other famous entertainer has done. Diddy's old homie Sean didn't feel the same way about it though. Back in the 90s, Sean was rocking with Diddy and Bad Boy Records. One night, Sean went to a club with Diddy and his girlfriend Jennifer Lopez, and Lopez allegedly snuck a gun into the place for Diddy. Nobody knows what really went down, but at some point a fight broke out and someone started letting off shots. Sean went down while Diddy skated on the case, but witnesses say that Diddy was the one who really pulled the trigger. Sean got deported and ended up going into politics in his home country of Belize. And after the news broke about Diddy getting hit with the Fed case, Sean said Diddy destroyed his life and put him in prison. Let us not lose sight of what the cold hard facts are. This was not someone 
uh, who I vacationed with and who he and I enjoyed this great intimate relationship of brotherhood. This is someone who destroyed my life. A reporter asked LL Cool J about the situation. Nigga, you should have told the truth then. <laughs> if, if, if Diddy the one that shot the girl, that's what the hell you should have said. No, you destroyed your own life by going in there and, and letting Diddy tell his people they all told you the Sean had the gun, Sean was the one shooting. If you knew that wasn't the truth, you should have came back and said something different. Situation two. LL Cool J said, No, I feel for his children. The rest, I can't speak on. I mean, you know, that's what we got court system for, but I feel for his kids. A dude named Freddie P used to be in a rap group with Diddy called The Band, and he told the art of dialogue that Diddy was always taking advantage of dudes in the industry. These rappers who get themselves start making a lot of money, then when things don't be um, hot no more, you fall back on people like him. He, he prey on you. And what he do is he, he offer you things to keep up a lifestyle. You can imagine, imagine public Playboy. Yeah, you know, Playboy, don't worry, man, don't worry about that, man. I, I can get us, come, come with me to the island, Playboy. Come chill with me. Won't be no security guards, no nothing. Won't nobody know about your business. Hey, don't worry about that. I'll wire that, Playboy. Freddie P said he knew about a lot of the accusations against Diddy before they came out, and he doesn't want to spoil what's coming up. He said that a lot of dudes in the rap game couldn't come forward about what Diddy did to them because it would hurt their image. And it seems like the story's just getting started. According to Freddie P, it wasn't like a... Uh, like a once in a one, once a month thing, it was a lifestyle. He was a monster. I mean, but damn, Freddie, he had y'all sleeping in bunk beds. <laughs> so what the fuck y'all, <laughs> what, what y'all had going on in there? You know what I'm saying? And then y'all did grown as hell living in this man, what, what, they, what they used to call it, daddy's house. You know what I'm saying? When he come in there, I'm shutting down the studio. I'm shutting down the studio. Studio shut down. Ain't nothing left open but booty holes. Y'all y'all real, bro. Cause as soon as he told me to go get that cheesecake, I'd have walked right off the show. In real life. There are a lot of rappers tied to the case, but celebrities from outside the rap game might go down too. Ashton Kutcher was really tight with Diddy. And when he got asked about Diddy's parties, Kutcher said, Wow, okay, I've got a lot I can't tell. <laughs> so, um, I can't tell that one either. Diddy even told on himself back in the day when he went on Conan O'Brien's show. In 2002, O'Brien asked Diddy about his parties and Diddy told him, We need um alcohols. Right. Alcohols. Right. Not just one alcohol. Alcohols. Right. Just Florals. different blend. You need Blends. the ladies, you need the booze. You need um some water. <laughs> <laughs> For watering plants? No. What? no, no, I don't know if guys have noticed this. Like, a lot of ladies drink water at parties they right. just you know so you have if you don't have what they need they're gonna leave right gotta right. keep them there right you need, you need locks on the doors <laughs> okay this Let's... is sounding kind of dangerous now locks on the door the hell are you putting locks on the door for this nigga diddy a wild boy boy everybody going to jail he allegedly filmed a lot of his parties with hidden cameras that nobody else knew about and that's why a ton of celebrities can end up going down too Diddy had connections all over the place and even party with Prince Harry from the royal family. 50 Cent did an interview with US Weekly and said that a lot of people aren't speaking up about Diddy because they're wrapped up in the situation too. The cops took all kinds of evidence from Diddy's cribs when they raided them and there's no telling how many celebrities he has videos of. Diddy pleaded not guilty to everything, but the prosecutors already have over 50 victims and witnesses that they're talking to. He's facing life in prison if he gets convicted of everything, and experts are saying there's no way Diddy's gonna take a plea deal. Even if the feds offered him a deal, Diddy would probably still do I ain't gonna lie, y'all. He in the same district that got R. Kelly got done. <laughs> it's over with. They took down Kale's boy, they took down Kale so quick. Kale's still trying to figure out what happened. Kale's using everything in the book. I couldn't read. I didn't know. I was never served. When Kale's got locked up so damn quick and sent it so fast, he don't even know what happened. Two decades locked up, so it seems like he's going to take it to trial and see how it goes. A few days after he got arrested, news broke that Diddy got put on suicide watch in jail. But his lawyer, Mark Agnafilo, told TMZ that Diddy isn't suicidal and that he's strong, healthy, confident, and focused on his defense. The feds don't usually arrest anyone unless they already know they can convict him. But even if Diddy beats the case, his career is probably over. After all the lawsuits came out, Howard University took away the honorary degree they gave Diddy and returned a $1 million donation he made. Then the mayor of New York City took away the keys to the city that Diddy got in September 2023. And it looks like this is just the start of everything.
Diddy's allegedly been assaulting people since the 90s and has ties to some of the biggest names in the industry. Nobody knows where the case is going to go yet, but stay tapped in for updates. Yeah, yeah so... Let me know what y'all think, man. I mean, I think Diddy cooked. Y'all get down in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. It's your boy Buddha. I'm out.